of the Lord. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Before we start the service, brethren, let me ask you to do something for me today. Just come out of your seat and greet Amen, your brethren as one family. Come on, brethren. Come out of your seat. Friendship with Jesus. Oh, fellowship divine. Oh, what blessed sweet communion. Hey, Jesus is a friend.
the Lord. God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Have a truth we can sense that movement of the Spirit of God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise, God. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you're happy and you know it, say, Hey. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me take the time out to greet our pastor, first lady, Sister Williams. Amen. And our son, praise God, you lovely brethren. Amen. Of the family of grace and true. Praise God. We are here today to lift up the name of Jesus. Let me take the time to Greet those that are watching us in Zoom and line. Praise God for you, the grace and true family are praying. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen, amen. We are praying for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The team said today, focus on the family. Amen. We're beginning our child's month. And we want the parents to focus on child's month. Especially your child. Amen. Not only your child alone, but others' child. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise, Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want you, Bob, this man, to pick up your phone and call. Amen. A brethren of this church, amen, hallelujah. Find out all they are keeping because each and every one of us is a child. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. God. Our aim and desire, one purpose today is to see one child be filled with the Holy oh, Ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We'll commence our service. Amen. Thank By you. singing 106 Thank from you. the Pentecostal in Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bring them in. Bring them in. Bring them in from the fields of
the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Our morning lesson is taken from St. Mark 10, reading from verse 1 to 16. Bless the Lord, you are worthy, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And it reads thus, And he arose from thence and came unto the coast of Judea by the farther side of Jordan, and the people resort unto him again. And as he, and as he was, was wont, he thought them again. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, It is lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him and he answered and said unto them what did Moses commanded you and they said Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away and Jesus answered and said unto them for the hardness of your heart he wrote you this 
precept. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. And then they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. And in the house of his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he said unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committed adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committed adultery. And they brought young children unto they brought young children to him that he should touch them, and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. 16. And he took them up in his arms, put his hand upon them, and blessed them. Here in the portion of God's old word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Call his name. Call his name. Well, you can count on me. I'm working for my Savior. Faithful.
it's by. I'm gonna walk those streets of glory by it's by. I'm gonna walk those streets of glory. I'm gonna sing redemption story. I'm gonna walk those streets of glory by it's by. By it's by. When the morning comes. Troubles, he will hear our greatest cry, and he will answer. Hallelujah! Oh, if you feel a little fire will turn it, you know that little fire is burning. Let us have a little talk with Jesus, makes it right. Yeah. 
Jesus. The good thing, hallelujah, is that when I have my little problems, hallelujah, I can talk to Jesus. I don't have to worry about talking to anybody. Praise the name of the Lord. I go to Jesus and I know he will take care of me. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I'm imploring each and every one of us this morning, if you want to have a little talk, have a little talk with Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You feel like worshiping the Lord some more? Hallelujah. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? God, I can't tell you anything and I don't hear it back. I can tell you anything, Jesus, hallelujah. And I can still come before you boldly, hallelujah, knowing that, Lord Jesus, you will not hold it against me. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. You are indeed an awesome God, hallelujah. You are a great God. You are a mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show it is and the works. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I've got everything I need to make me happy. I've got Jesus to show me the way. He has saved me and gave me life eternal. And now I've got everything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are just that kind of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord, Jesus. Let me take the time out to greet everyone in the wonderful name of Jesus. Praise God on behalf of Pastor William who is not here, I'm sure. You might be wondering where he is. Praise God. He's um, at Wayside Tabernacle or Good Grown, formerly Wayside Tabernacle. He'll be ministering there this morning. Praise God. And so as, the, as you um, focus, praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Just breathe a word. Ask the Lord to cover him. Praise God. We're here to worship the Lord. Amen. Pastor Williams is not here, but Jesus is here. And we are here. Praise the name of the Lord. And he has brought us here today. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus to give him praise and glory and honor and adoration. And so we're going to seize the opportunity. We're not going to go back home with our praise. Amen, somebody? We're going to give the Lord what we brought to give to him. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. I understand that the missions department has a skit. Praise God. Could you come? Bless the Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just continue to worship the Lord. Praise God. She'll be coming with the report. Praise God. Continue to worship the Lord. And remember, today's Mission Sunday. Amen, somebody? Today's Mission Sunday. We are in the seventh, um, seven Sundays of the month. We're also in May. Today begins the first of May. And we're in Child's Month. Praise God. And you heard the theme this morning. Focus on the family. The family, that's where it all starts. Right at home with the family. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. This is a report of the mission theme, of the mission team. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. It is our mission to go out into all regions of Jamaica, converting souls and developing them into effective witnesses for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. For each month, the activities are, every first Sunday of each month is recognized as Mission Sunday, and as such, an offering is being collected on this Sunday known as a Missions Offering. Every second Saturday of each month, we would have prayer meeting in designated areas within the community. Every fourth Thursday, the mission team have been asked to fast, followed by our monthly meetings to discuss plans for the next month and also to reflect on the outgoing month. Every fourth Saturday, we would have visitation and roadside Bible study where necessary. Our Sunday school teachers will be asked to get on board as we are anticipating these roadside studies. On February 2, 2022, the mission team, along with members of the church, went to Lucky Hill Square and Belga Square for a prayer meeting. It was an awesome meeting as members of the community stand by 
to listen to the gospel that was passed on to them. Those who requested prayer were being prayed for. They were also given verbal invitation to church and was also reminded of the importance of their soul. On March 12, 2022, we had prayer in the assembly. That was sweet and refreshing. On March 26, we decided to have prayer at Nottingham Square, but had to postpone due to Youth Week 2022. On the 16th of April, the team went out on visitation, inviting and telling people about the importance of their soul and about the love God had for them. That was a success. A few community members showed up at church along with other visitors that were invited by the church body. We had a great time in church. Follow-up calls were made to our visitors, some stating that they enjoyed the service and it's their intention to visit us again. Some requested prayer, others undecided. On April 30th, 2022, we had prayer at Nottingham Square. It was a blessing to be there. I must commend the team members who have been faithful in pulling the stops out to carry out the master's business. I must also make mention of Sister Paulette, Sister Jackie, Brother Sean, who I pest regular. You took the time out to journey with us on kingdom business. A big thanks to you all. Your, your reward awaits you. Let me encourage you to keep it up. For the month of May, which begins today, we will be launching our fundraising drive under the theme, Inspire to Help, Each One Reach One. On the 14th of May, we will have morning prayer at Mispa Square starting at 6.30 a.m. On the 28th of May, we will have visitation and roadside Bible study where necessary. Again, our Sunday school teachers are being asked to get on board. Tracks will be provided on these visits. We are looking forward to host Missions Crusade this month with one night out in the streets. However, this is yet to be confirmed with our authorities. It is our intention to go into this community, spread the gospel, and win souls for the glory of God. So together by faith, we will push and spread the gospel of Christ. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord another time. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we all just worship the Lord? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Together we will push and spread the gospel within this community. So I'm asking each and everyone, get on board with us, please. We are asking for your help. We need the help out there. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Is it God good? Is it God good? Hallelujah, hallelujah. He has given us so many blessings. Bless the name of Jesus. And this mission team have been inspired to help. Each one reach one. Bless the name of Jesus. So you see we are asking for donations right now. Bless the name of Jesus. So if you have 500, 5,000, 1,000, 150 dollars, I'm going to ask you just to bring it come now, please. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Give it with love, store it about, give it with a willing heart. Give it with love, store it about, give it with a willing heart. Give it with love, store it about, give it with a willing heart. Give it with Give it with love, 
And at this time, I'm going to ask Sister Babes. She's going to bless the donation right now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And remember, Bridget, it is not just for today only. We are asking for donation each and every time you come into the presence of the Lord and you can find it. The panel will be right there. We are asking to give for a worthy cause. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. So remember, the panel will be right there. Praise the Lord. Jesus said you are asked to give. Ask you are asked to support the mission's theme. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we all stand? Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just lift your hands in the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. Worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Go ahead, Oshers. Go ahead, Oshers.
importantly mighty God as we walk through these doors help us to give your worship help us to give your all we give you praise and glory and honor as we say thanks in Jesus name hallelujah praise God at this time brother Sean is coming to minister to us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah if I did not say let me take the time out to greet those who are on zoom our visitors praise the name of the Lord Jesus let me greet every brethren in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us just continue to worship the Lord. And as the word go forth this morning, praise God. Let it just fall, praise the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, upon good ground. And that we'll not only be hearers of the word, but we'll be doers of the word. God bless you, Brother Sean, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're turning in our Bibles to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. One, two. When we found it, please say amen. Amen. We'll read together. After two, one, two, go. 
but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I'd like to talk to us for a few minutes on the topic, the power to be a witness. Could you all unite in prayer, everybody? Lord God, I thank you for today. Thank you for the love that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord, that whilst we were without, Lord God, and, and so undeserving of your grace and your tender mercies, Lord, you came and you died for sinners such as us. Lord God, the song says such love, such wondrous love, that God should love a sinner such as I. Lord, as I'm about to speak, I pray, God, that you, the hearts and mind of your people may be ministered to, even as my own is ministered to. Lord God, I pray that the words would inspire people, Lord God Almighty, to take action, Lord Jesus, God Almighty. Hallelujah, to become witnesses for you. Lord God, I thank you for all you've done. Even Pastor Williams, Lord, hallelujah. I pray that you touch him, that as he ministers, that God, people's hearts and minds would be touched and ministered to in a mighty way. I thank you, Lord, for all you've done and even what you're about to do. Have your way, God Almighty. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated, everybody. <clears throat> I greet us all in the mighty name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. Um, all our visitors, saints that are here this morning, I greet you just the same. Even those who are online and watching us, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. As was mentioned, the topic I'd love to look at for today is the topic of the power to be a witness. And as we would see, our scripture text is taken from Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But we could just, for a few seconds, just take a little backdrop as to what is happening in Acts chapter 1. Now, if we look at Acts chapter 1, the beginning verses, the book of Acts is to believed to have been written by Paul. And in the first part of the uh, Acts chapter 1, he says, The former treaties have I written unto you, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until he was taken up. Now, first, he puts a backdrop of everything that was happening. Now, Jesus had just been crucified and he just was raised from the dead. And here it is. Jesus meets with his disciples and he's about to go ascend into heaven. But before he goes, he has words of encouragement and commandments to give unto them. We see that in chapters 1 through to 3, he shows himself, particularly in verse 3, of infallible proof to those who are around them. And for 40 days, he went about and he spoke about the kingdom of God. We continue on. Where in verse 5, he stops and he says to, before we get to verse, verse 8, sorry, verse 7, they ask of him a question and they say to him, Lord, when is it that you're going to restore the kingdom of Jerusalem? Now, many persons held the belief then that Jesus came to establish Jerusalem and by extension, Israel, the nation. They thought that Jesus was in our day and age, what he'd be is a politician. And the way he would come is that he would come and he'd revolt against what was happening. And by fighting against what was happening, he would establish his own kingdom. And as such, this was even why there was contention as to who was greatest in the kingdom. Because they thought the Lord was going to establish a throne here on earth. And as such, Jesus is about to leave them and they want to know, Lord, we have long awaited for you to set up and build up Israel as a nation. Tell us when this time is going to come. And in verse 7, he gives to them a reply and he says, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his power. You thought that I was coming to establish an earthly kingdom and an earthly throne. But here it is where he contradicted all that the men thought that he was there to do. And then in verse chapter 8, he says this to them. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. 
the Lord is saying, and if you follow the trend of the scripture, the person first receives the Holy Ghost. After receiving the Holy Ghost, the person receives power. And after receiving power, the next thing that the person is to do is to become a witness of unto God. So we're going over the, the procedure again. The person first receives the power of the Holy Ghost. After the power of the Holy Ghost has been received, the person receives power. After power has been received, then the person must become a witness unto those who are un unbelievers. Now, we see something very interesting here. Now, the word witness comes from the Greek word which means to be a martyr. It is believed that every single one of the apostles did not die of natural causes, but they were killed for the name of Jesus. And these men were not afraid. They were very witnesses of the things that they saw, where people were healed. People were delivered from demonic possession. All of these things happened. And therefore, when they were forced or told to just shut up their mouths and not say anything about Jesus, they say, here, what no man, I have seen it for myself. And therefore, I am going to talk about it. When we think about going to court, there is a witness that is placed on the stand. And when the witness is placed on the stand, the witness tell of all they saw and all that they heard and sometimes even what they felt. Now, when a witness goes on the stand, it cannot be a puny, puny witness. The witness must know what they are, about, are talking about and the facts must line up. In a similar way as Christians, we are expected to be witnesses of Jesus Christ. So the things that we have received for ourselves, the blessings of Almighty God, the deliverance from sin, we are supposed to go out and tell people about that so that they too can be converted. Peter, James, and John witnessed the transfiguration of Jesus. And this is seen in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 through to 18. Hundreds saw Jesus after his resurrection. And Paul talked about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 6. This is more, this more than fulfills what the Mosaic law required. By Mosaic law, covered in Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 6, you required at least two witnesses to validate that something actually happened. Now, if you look at this, there were hundreds of thousands of people who bore witness that Jesus had risen from the grave. And as such, when they were told to shut up and say nothing about it, they said, here, one man, I saw the man for myself, and therefore, I am a witness of the very thing. Yeah. Now, Many of us would not have seen Jesus for ourselves. And to be frank with you, brethren, there are some of us when witnessing, there are some questions that are asked that we really don't know how to answer all of them sometimes. But hear what? The fact that I have had an experience, we can talk about our experience. I don't fully understand all the questions you have asked, but here one man, I was at a low stage in my life and the Lord was able to deliver me. Why? I am a witness of the very thing. Therefore, all my words may not line up, but hear what? I received that transformation of my heart. And if you want me to come back to you and explain what I mean by the scripture or these scriptures, I'll do it. But hear what? If we can't rely on my knowledge of the Bible, I have an experience. I, have a, I am a witness of all that God is able to do. Before one becomes a witness, there is a very important prerequisite. The person must have the Holy Ghost. In order to have the whole, after having the Holy Ghost rather, that person receives power to become a witness unto God. Now, if we think about it in a logical sense, when somebody is going out to war, they don't just go out to war barehanded or empty-handed. Many times they go with what they're fighting against the enemy with and they go with protection for themselves. 
So the police, if they're going to arrest somebody who they believe is very armed and dangerous, they covering themselves with a bulletproof vest and a bulletproof helmet and all of these things. And then they have a rifle in their hand to take out the enemy should the knees arise. In a similar way, as we go to evangelize, we cannot just go with our bare hands. We have to go with the power of Almighty God. Therefore, we have to ensure that we are prayed up, that we are fast up, that we are reading our Bibles and trying to maintain a life with the Lord. We have to ensure that we have the power because, brethren, there are many times where we will encounter people to whom we are witnessing, to whom we will tarry at the altar, who are possessed with demons. And we can't be puny, puny. We cannot run away from demons and forces of darkness. We have to many times stand and fight against them and declare that God has given us power over you. Now we look at the trend where Jesus says in, in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he says, And he shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. Now, if we look at the map, and I had to look at the map to see, because I was wondering, why Judea? Why Samaria? Why, why that order? If you look at how the map of then, and some of you would have had maps at the, the back of your Bible. Sorry. And what you'd realize is that moving out of Jerusalem, you move into Judea, in Judea and you move then into Samaria, and from there the gospel could be spread to anywhere else in the world. What does that mean for us? The spreading of the gospel and being a witness starts closest to you. So it starts in our homes first and foremost. We have to be witnesses to our families. And our immediate families are even more important than anybody else. And then our extended families. Why? The plan of salvation should start with those who are closest to me. I must be a witness to my family members first. And then I'm a witness to the rest of the world. It is possible that when you witness to your family members that they will not surrender their life. It is possible that some of your family members have backslidden. That should not stop you from being a witness. I'm going to say it one more time. If your child was once a Christian and they have no backslidden, it should not stop you from being a witness. If your spouse was one a Chris, once a Christian and they have no backslidden, don't let it stop you from being a witness. They have a decision to make for themselves. And if they don't want to choose what is right, hear what? I am still telling you what is right. So if somebody even bring that up to you on the mission field, they have a decision and you have a decision too. So we begin in our families. We spread it to our neighbors. So my, the person who lives next to me should know about Jesus. Not only because I tell them about Jesus, but they should see Christ being demonstrated by the way that I live my life. Then, after that, I am at a workplace and I am spreading the good news of Jesus to those who are around me. So I'm telling them about it, one, and they are seeing it by the way that I operate. That hear what? That person is a child of God. And then from there, it spreads to the entire world. The Holy Ghost power. The Holy Ghost gives power and the consequence of power is that we should be witnesses. The Holy Ghost gives power, and once we have received power, my next duty is to become a witness unto God. Today's Mission Sunday, and the idea of evangelism is important, that everybody must become an evangelist. No, I, I have this later down, but I might just say it now, brethren. A church of people who does not evangelize is a church that is going to die. 
A church of people that do not evangelize is a church that is heading for death. If we have people in the church and we don't tell people about God and people are being saved, the church is going to die. Therefore, every member, whether it is you're a musician, a media personnel, a Sunday school teacher, a praise and worship leader, a prayer warrior, has to be involved in reaching the last. We have to tell people about Jesus. The minute we stop, brethren, the church is heading for what? Death. Now, these are some important things to remember. You do not need to be a world-class evangelist to tell somebody about Jesus. You do not need to know every single thing about the Bible and where Jesus was born and how this worked and hermeneutics and, and all of these things and the rapture and the end of days and prophecy and eschatology and all of these fancy words that they use. You don't need to know it to tell somebody about Jesus. We should be careful as Christians that we do not fear rejection. We should not be afraid of somebody telling us no. If somebody says to you, I do not want to know about Jesus. No, I don't want to hear it. We should not be daunted by it. That should not mean that we give up. If somebody tells us no, I'm finding somebody else who will tell me yes. The attitude of Jesus was, he came unto his own and his own received him not. And what did he do? He went unto everybody who would accept him. And what? He gave them life and life more abundantly. So if it is that you reject me, I am not going to condemn you to hell. I am going to find somebody else who will say yes to the call of God. So if somebody tells you no and I straying a little bit, even in your own life, in getting a career, in advancing the life of your family, if rejection happens where things don't work the way you wanted or thought it would have worked, do not give up. And that same attitude transfers into evangelism. In order to be an effective evangelist, you need to continue to grow. So church attendance is important. Knowing what the Bible says is important. Attending Bible studies and prayer meetings and youth services for the young people is important in order to be an effective witness of those things that we have heard and have seen for ourselves. You do not need to be on the stage of the world in order to be an evangelist. Any and everywhere you can evangelize to people. So if it is that you are on a bus, the person you sit beside, you can tell them about Jesus. If it is that I am walking, I am telling people about Jesus. There are times in my own life of telling people about Jesus. I see somebody walking and I just walk up to them. And I start to talk to them about what, whatever. Some of them are on the phone, you start talking about the phone. And before long, it leads into what? Evangelism. One person, I was sitting at UWE one time and a young man came and he was taking pictures of the, the place because he's a photographer. And he said, the way that I sat and the way the sun. And before long, I talked to him about photography. I started to show him the pictures of the sunset that I took. And before long, you know what I started telling him about? Jesus. And how that he can be saved. So here, what? You got church? You got church? We got church, man. We used to go to church. And, and before long, what happened? The conversation switched from photography to what? Jesus. And we have to be tactful, brethren, in that we can sway conversations. So we can start off at talking about your trade or whatever, or your career, but at the end of the day, I am going to tell you by the time this conversation is done that Jesus loves you and you need to surrender your life to God. So, there is a very important scripture in the Bible of freely you have received. And therefore, many of you can finish that. Freely give. Freely I have received. Nobody never charged me when they tell me about Jesus. And if we remember our life, brethren, when we went to the altar, them they charged you a fee? 
sure? Can you imagine if everybody who came to the altar, once you get to that first bench there to step into the altar area, they charge your feet to tarry with you? Can you imagine? Probably more people get the Holy Ghost. Because <laughs> they might take more the money with them spend. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is just for humor. But continuing, we did not pay to get salvation, brethren. And because we did not pay to get salvation, we have received it freely, so we should freely give it to somebody else. In 1 Kings chapter 7, verses 1 through to 10, we see the story of four lepers. And they are lepers, and as such, they are cast out from current civilization. And they are going, and they say, if we go into the camp of the Syrians, it is possible they may kill us. But it is also quite possible that they may give us food and we may survive. Who to tell? In this same chapter, whilst the men are walking to the camp of Syria, the men here, as it were, chariots and an army coming. And you know what happened to the Syrians? They ran and left their armory, their food, everything. And these lepers went in, and they went and they fooled their belly. And whilst they were fooling their belly, in 1 Kings chapter 7 and verse 9, they said one to the other, we do not well. What it mean, Jamaican term, we not going good. What it mean, we not doing the right thing. This day is the day of good tiding, and we hold our peace. If we tarry till morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore, come, that we may go and tell the king's household. We, they were cast out of civilization. They went and were able to get food for themselves. And in eating this food, they said, no, we have received it. We can't keep it to ourselves. The people back home need food. We need to bring the food to them. We need to tell them about it. Therefore, brethren, we too have got to have that same mindset. We have received the good news of salvation. Our lives have been transformed by Jesus. And as such, we cannot and should not keep it to ourselves. If we do, we're not doing well. We continue onward in, in Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11. It says, the life of the body is in the blood. The life of the church is in evangelism. The life of the church is what? In evangelism. If we don't have a church that is evangelizing and winning people to God, we are dying as a church. Everybody has got to become an evangelist, brethren. In John chapter 4, from verses 1 through to 30, we see the woman at the well and Jesus comes and he has this conversation with her. And the minute she receives this peace and joy internally, she said, no, I can't keep it to myself. I know my water pot is here, but I have to run and I have to tell somebody else. We see in John chapter 4 verses 28 and 29, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, come see a man. Why? I have received salvation. And because I received salvation, salvation equips me to run and to tell everybody else to do what? Come and see a man. I have received power, and the power has enabled me to be a witness to everybody else. After we have received the power, we need to go and tell people. Brethren, there's a popular thing that is said, and it, uh, I see the grace with which it is said and the reasoning. We should not keep friends with the world, but brethren, if we're going to have to reach them, we should, and we, we're going to have to keep friends with the world. We should not be influenced by the world. There's a difference. There's a difference. 
It should not be that we are so much Christians that the people who we call not non-Christians, we don't talk to them. We cannot only exist within the church. We have to talk to people outside of the church. Therefore, we can have associates in the world, but who do you allow to influence you? Not people in the world. So we're going to keep the friendships that we have with them. And while we have these friendships, we're telling them about Jesus. If we don't have a friendship with them, you know what happened? We can't tell them about Jesus. Or the impact won't be as great. Brethren, we think about evangelism. Majority of the new converts that are one to church are one out of friendships. They are not one out of strange association. I don't just see you for the first time and decide I'm going to give my life to God. I am a friend with you and after observing your life for a while and seeing and you telling me about Jesus, I decide to change my life over and surrender to God. It does not usually just happen out of the blue like that, brethren. So your friends that you have, tell them about Jesus. Witness to them. Don't let them change you into sin and ungodly things. But hear what? I am going to have this friendship. Why? I value your soul. And because I value your soul, I'm keeping a window open and a door open so that I can tell you about Jesus Christ. We need the power, brethren. We need the power to be effective evangelists. The story is told of a man whose name is Harry Ryder. He tells a story about the first car that he ever owned. He was 16 years old, and his father took him to the car auction and bought a pink car for $75. It was a 1957 Ford that his dad insisted the color was really coral. I can't drive a pink car to school, he told his father. Son, a poor rider is better than a proud walker. Harry said that it was so convincing that he figured that it was probably from the Bible. Then his dad opened the hood and to Harry's surprise was a 390 engine that had two four-barrel carburetors. The car had been a South Carolina Highway Patrol car, and therein was the reason it had such a massive engine. They often referred to this car as the police in interceptor. There was no other engine that was as powerful as this engine that was in that car. This was in those times. Harry said, that it was very interesting how that when he would go to the stoplights and would stop, persons would come and would look over to him and say, would you want to challenge me to a race? And how that the immediately when the light turned to green, Harry was able to leave them in the dust. Why? At the exterior, the car was pink and looked perhaps even girly. But what happened is that the engine that carried that vehicle was greater than what they had. Amen. What does this mean for us? The world may look at us and wonder what it is that we have. But brethren, the power of God that indwells us should carry us far and wide. Why? I have something that you can't see, but when it is activated, it conquers all. Why then do we need the power of God and we need to make sure we have it good? We need the power to live above sin. Why do we need the power to fight against the darts of the enemy? Why do we need the power? People need to be saved. To make it more specific than that, my family needs to be saved. Your family needs to be saved. Why we need the power? We need the power to deal with all of the issues of life. Why we need the power? We need the power to determine the motives of the people to whom we will speak. In Acts chapter 16 and verse 17, 
A damsel comes and she walks around the apostles and she says, These are servants of the Most High God who tell us the way of salvation. Although she was saying the right thing, she was possessed with a demon. But because the apostles had the power, they were saying the right thing and demon possessed. But the power that was inside of them helped them to realize that this is from the devil. So we need the power. In Acts chapter 16, from verses 16 through to 40, the men of God are in prison, Paul and Silas, and they are cast into a prison. But because they had the power of God inside of them, they sang praises unto God. And when they sang praises, the prison door were open. Why? These men had the power not only to be witnesses, but also that the Lord would impact their own lives. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6, Paul is talking and Paul says, I have planted, Apollo have watered, and God gives the increase. We need the power so that after we plant a seed about salvation in somebody's mind, that there is somebody else who is there to water it, and the power of God comes along and gives us a harvest. But if we don't have the power, brethren, all we'll be doing is just saying nice words. We can see then from the beginning, the Lord had a way to bring back man to himself. We see he went and he died on a cross so that men can receive salvation. And he says, I no longer only want to write laws and give it to you, but I would that my power comes inside of you and live inside of you so that you can now become my disciples. We are saved to tell people about Jesus. We are saved to tell people about Jesus. There are times in our walk, brethren, where we become sidetracked and we don't have evangelism as a priority. Today is a reminder. If you stop, tell people about Jesus. Start again. If it is, it dropped off the line because of work or because of school or because of family. Whatever the case is, here is a fresh reminder. Evangelism is important. We have to tell somebody else about Jesus. How dare we get it and keep it to ourselves? I'm closing. Something that came to mind, I've said it here before, but I just want to remind us of it. Uh, Pastor Billy Cole, who was a wonderful missionary in UPCI, he speaks and gives this parable. He says, a doctor drove onto the side scene of an accident where people were going to die. And the doctor, upon seeing all the people, you know when people crash in an accident, there's a right way or wrong way to take them out of the vehicle. Because the way you take them out, you might actually be killing them instead of helping them. And the doctor comes on the scene. He realizes all of this. And the doctor shouts and he says, stop! You are killing the man! And after everybody stops, the doctor jumps back in his car and drives off the scene. Did he help them any at all? He was of no help to them. Whether you believe it or not, he was of no help to them. Help to them would have been, you are taking the man out the wrong way. I will tell you what to do. Put him in a vehicle and let us carry him to the hospital. But the fact that he said, no, it's better you had left them. And the 50-50 chance would have existed that they may have lived or they may have died. But right now, them sure said they were dead. We cannot just say we have the right and we know the right and baptism in Jesus' name and walking holy and all of these things. Yet still, we say to the other churches, you have it wrong and you shouldn't be telling them about us and the Holy Ghost. And yet still, we, we don't do anything. So after we tell them that they have it wrong and they're not doing what the Bible says, we do nothing. We tell no one. Have we helped anybody? No, you better hear them make them go and do what they do. 
We have got to have evangelism, brethren. Every single person. And we can challenge each other to evangelism. Whereby I challenging you and you challenging me. Brother Sean, did you tell somebody about Jesus this week? Did you witness to somebody who is lost and dying? If the answer is no, you need to shape up yourself, man. If we're not evangelizing, we're not going anywhere. And brethren, I can tell you this. When you start to evangelize, your spiritual life is going to grow more. 100%. Because you have to pray more because you can't say any and everything to somebody. You have to make sure you have it right. You're going to have to be praying more that the Lord leads you to who you will evangelize. And that souls will be saved for the kingdom of God. I have one final thing to, to call to our attention. I was reading something recently and about evangelism and and the story is told of somebody who asked god lord i would that every day you would lead me to people to whom i'll evangelize and the man would go out and then on this particular morning he's sitting on the train and somebody comes to him and says i am lost and i am dying and i would love that jesus would save me in so many words and the man turns away and says hold on for a second let me pray about it. And then he prays and he says, God, is this the person to whom I should witness? That makes sense to anybody? So brethren, the point of the story is every, uh, everybody around us that comes beside us, all of those things, they are in need of Jesus. Brethren, the, the wrong saying that people don't want God no more. I don't believe it from now until, until the rest of my life. I was going to say infinity, but that would have been the wrong thing. But from now to the end of my life, I will never believe that people always want Jesus. Anybody who say that people don't want God anymore, respectfully disagree with them that hear what? I believe that people want Jesus. The harvest is ripe. The laborers are few. And when I went to the inspiration recently, I heard them singing it. And they say, the harvest is ripe. We are the laborers. We are willing to work for you. We're ready to work. We're ready to work. We have the anointing. They know, so we need the anointing. We have it already. So what? The harvest is ripe. We are the laborers. We have the power, brethren, to be a witness. Everywhere I go, I want the world to know the blood of Jesus ransomed me. And the fact that the Lord was able to ransom me, he can do the same thing for you. And as such, I am telling you that there is no satisfaction without salvation. I have received the power, yes, that God would provide for me. I received the power to cast out demons. I received the power to just pray and to command things and the Lord works on my behalf. But I received power also to be a witness. I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus. If it's once per week, if it's twice per week, if it's three times, if it's every day for the week, I can do it. I will do it. I must do it. Why? People must be saved. I have the power for sure, but I need to be a witness. I need to tell people about Jesus Christ. Could you all stand, everybody? I would ask of us to make a bold step. And this is nothing to be um, ashamed about. But if it is that... You would love a burden for, for Christ to plant in you the desire to win souls. I'm going to ask you to come. If it is that over the years and the months you have lost your drive to see souls saved for the kingdom, 
come. If it is that you are here and without the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you want to surrender your life to God, come just the same. Whatever the description, if you have the power of God but you are afraid to talk to people when you see them on the road, come. If it is that you are afraid of demons and all of these things, come whatever situation brethren we can come and we can pray about it today and we say lord i would i have the power already help me jesus to be a witness the lord bless you praise the name of the lord we have heard the good news of salvation brethren and we don't want to keep it to ourselves we need to go Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. We need to go to the byways and the edges as we're reminded in the scripture and tell somebody. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus as Brother Sean admonished us. We don't need to have any fancy words. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Make it as simple as simple as can be. Jesus loves you. He cares for you. Give your life to the Lord. You need to give your life to the Lord. You need to repent of your sins. You need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. As simple, as simple as can be. Don't say, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not telling anybody anything. Because I don't know what to tell them. If it is that they come to you with something that you don't understand, ask for help. Ask for help. But don't let that stop you, praise God, from witnessing to somebody. We work for Jesus till the shadows fall labor for the master and give to him or all in the dewing season when the reapers reap, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Oh, we will work for Jesus.
Let me remind us, praise the name of the Lord Jesus. It starts in the home. Praise the name of the Lord. If we're not examples to those we live with, praise the name of the Lord Jesus, then we will be failing. There must be a light. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say that you're going to drag them to come to church, but there must be something there, some reflection from you that says, listen, I see the light in this person, and I want to accept the God. I want to serve the God that they are serving. Praise God, there must be something there. Praise the name of the Lord at this time. I'm going to ask Brother Sean to come back. Praise the Lord Jesus, and he's going to close us in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Be in pain. Hallelujah. If I could help somebody as I pass. Is there anybody, or perhaps there are persons here, for those whose children are backslide? Could we see? Could I see you raise your hand, please? I would that we would have. So, all three of you that are there, would you hold hands to each other or some make a connection between each other? For those who are closer over there, could you hold hands to each other? Amen. For those whose spouse aren't saved, I would that we could join the link and, and just, if you're holding onto the person's shoulder or hand, whichever one of them, Amen. And just make a link. We're going to be praying, especially for those whose um, partners are not saved, for those whose children are backslidden, for those whose children are not saved. Let me see by the raising of your hand. Anybody fits that description? Amen. Oh, Could we have Sister Anne Marie, Brother Ratcliffe, Sister Hallelujah. Pat, Sister Hallelujah. Phillips? Could you just Hallelujah. hold on within that area there and give strength to them? So, whilst we're praying, we're praying for these situations, brethren. For those whose children are backslidden, for those whose partners are not saved, for those whose children are not saved, for those whose family members are not saved. We're extending it to that afterwards. But we're praying for the immediate family members today. Amen. There will be other times where we pray about our extended family. But today, I want us to be specific in our prayers. Your husband, your wife not saved, we're praying for them. Your child that's backslidden or your child is unsaved, we're praying for those. For those whose brothers or sisters are not saved, we can join hands as well and we're going to pray. Everybody, everywhere, who they all unite in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your tender mercies towards us. Lord God, you are Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and for that we thank you, for that we praise your great name. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God Almighty, for those who have responded and have said, Lord, I need a burden in my heart for evangelism. For those, Lord God, who have lost the per passion for evangelism, Lord, who have come up here and have said, I need a fresh anointing. I thank you, Lord, for them. Lord God, I pray that over every one of us that, Lord, a fresh burden be born. Lord God, as Charles Spurgeon once said, if they're going to go to hell, oh God Almighty, we want for them to go with with us holding on to their hand to their foot and saying there's a better way lord god almighty hallelujah help at each and every person that is here god almighty have a value for soul lord god souls the price for soul oh god almighty is so oh god almighty influence infinite to the extent god almighty a monetary value cannot be attached accurately to it Lord God, and as such, I pray, God, that you will help each and every one of us to have a proper understanding of that and to value souls. Lord God Almighty, for those who are here whose partners are not saved, I pray that you'll touch them even now. I pray, God Almighty, that you'll help that these wives be influences to their husbands and vice versa, so that Jesus, God Almighty, their partners may be one to you. For those whose children are backslidden, I pray that you touch those children even now. I pray, God Almighty, that these individuals not be despondent, Lord God, and have fear to evangelize because their children are backslidden. But help them, Lord God Almighty, hallelujah, to channel that energy into telling somebody else's child about you. 
Lord God Almighty, while still seeking to the salvation of their own children. I pray, God, that children that are backslidden may be won back to the fold today and that they would surrender themselves afresh to you. Lord, children that have yet to start their walk with you, I pray, God, that today might be a turning around even as we pray, even for those who are holding hands. I pray, God, that there be unity. I pray, God, that there be strength. I pray, God, that the power that you have given to us might empower us, God, to be witnesses to a lost and dying world. Lord God Almighty, I pray for those whose siblings are not saved, brothers and sisters that are not saved. I pray, God Almighty, that you will touch them. Lord God, cause that these siblings would inf influence their brothers and their sisters. Lord God, and even stepbrothers and stepsisters. Lord God, to surrender themselves to you before time changes into eternity. Help us to never lose the passion and the drive for evangelism. But Lord, as the song says, place a burden in our hearts. Lord God, where there is a growing desire and there is always a desire to see souls one for your kingdom. Lord God, the extended family, Lord God, touch them. Lord God Almighty, the community, Lord, touch them, Lord. May we, the church of grace and truth, tabernacle, Lord, not only stop those who we believe are spreading heresies, but Lord, help that we take it up in our hands, Lord, and tell people about them, Jesus Christ, and how that you died, Lord God, and that you are resurrected so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Sweep over us, Jesus God. May we have at the forefront of our mind that we need to see souls saved. Oh God, and help that that would drive our Christian life. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done and what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name, I would challenge those who are here. I've said it before. Challenge those who are here whose children are not saved. Form a prayer circle for those whose partners are not saved. Form a prayer circle and decide that once or twice per month, you're just going to pray that they will be saved. Amen. The Lord bless you. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. As you go back to your seats, praise the Lord. Be reminded that we need to win the lost at any cost. So as you go through this week, praise the Lord Jesus. As the song says, souls are crying. Men are dying. Win the lost at any cost. Praise the Lord. And missions is not just assigned to a particular person or some persons. It's for all of us. Praise the name of the Lord. As the scripture was read, once we receive the power, praise the name of the Lord. We are commissioned to go. Praise the Lord and be witnesses. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise God. God bless you. Bless the Lord. By way of announcement.